Hey folks, in this video, what I want to show is how to prioritize a backlog of items. So if you're building a backlog, whether it's for software project or another sort of project where you got a large chunk of work and you need to divide that up into smaller bits, then you may want to to determine, well, which bits of work do I go for first and which bits do I hold off on, given that we only have limited number of teams, limited number of people to be able to take on that work, uh, we need to be able to effectively prioritize. So here I'm showing a set of prioritization models. And in this video, what I'm going to do is take a look at the ones called currencies. We're going to bring in cost of delay and we're going to bring in the weighted shortest job first. So here's the way that uh, the system's going to run is we're going to construct the WizGIF formula. And in order to do that, we're going to look at a set of value currencies. We're going to determine you know, if you have strategic pillars within your organization, uh, how do they align into these specific currencies. We'll consider how to select those, load them into the calculation for the feature. And I put together a little grid for the team to be able to organize their communications. So let's move over to here. So the way the formula works, and let's put this to a multiplication. Uh, there is a couple. Okay, we'll start with this. The weighted shortest job first is the sum of the value currencies multiplied by a time premium divided by effort. Now, in some cases, you might see that there is a sum of value currencies and there's a couple other items on the numerator and it's called the cost of delay. Uh, so there, there's some thinking around this. Uh, just pick what works best for you. Some of that thinking is that the cost of delay is actually something a bit different than the value currencies here. And yeah, there's, there's I don't wanna get into the depths of that conversation. Just essentially what I'm doing here is I just want the value currencies to stand alone and then we can factor it by a time premium. That time premium can be like 0 0.1 if it's not a big impact. Just keep it as a multiple of one if you want to keep things simple. Or if you know that there's definitely there's there is a time premium on this, we have to get it done within a, a specific set of time, then you can debate that with your team on what constitutes the multiplier for the time premium. Divided by effort gives us a quotient. And the idea is we pick the items or we bubble the items to the top of the backlog based on how high that quotient is. If just say it's 50 and 50 is the top number, you percolate that one to the top of the backlog. Okay, so next step here is to consider uh, strategic pillars. So I'll grab a sticky note here. And strategic pillars are, we can consider them strategic objectives. So what is it that you want to achieve from your organizational unit or for your product? So if I'm considering an insurance product, take this, let's call it insurance. All right. What are some of the things that I need to think about within this specific company? Again, this is specific to the company. So if this company says, Ooh, time to market new products. Okay. So the idea here is perhaps they're a little slow at getting new markets, um, new products to market. They need to be able to move on that faster. And another thing that they might look at is uh, uh, margins.
So they might want to maximize margins per product. Um, if I just say versus, let's see here, in an insurance industry, reserves, uh, consumption. So you're going to you're going to sell the product, try to get the best margin possible, but also you want to make sure that the reserve rates are um, based in a way that you get to collect some of those reserves. Now, reserves are used to pay for claims as uh, the products as claims start coming in on these products. So there's a balance there that your team will have to do some math magic to figure out given that we're in the uh, scope of an insurance market. Okay. So what might we then do in order to achieve those objectives? We, I put some ideas up here to help give us something to think about uh, as far as, well, what might be some good currencies that we can bring forward let's go back and take a look at these time to market new products do we have there's our responsiveness so i'll just take a copy of that Perhaps currency one will it make us um responsiveness to customer requests okay say we're, we're doing that uh, we uh, let's assume that we work for we white label uh, particular insurance products to say you're doing designer handbags and you want to have some sort of um, wear and tear on the handbags and you can give an extended policy well, then i want to know like when a new line or fashion line comes out that i can actually get a product uh, built for that fashion line it might not just be handbags. It could be all kinds of designer accessory wear, but different accessories might have different ways that, that they become damaged or misused, abused, so on and so forth in a way that it might change the way that we're maximizing our margin. So if we have that one, let's say we do margin max of margin maximizing all right so let's say we pick two currencies then the other thing is we want to consider okay what what measurable objectives do we have for these currencies so responsiveness to customer requests perhaps uh, we can new product lines in under 14 days from request customer requests let's do that okay so just ways just brainstorm with your team ways that you can potentially measure that product or those requests margin maxification oof okay how would we do this one um Products sold come in at a 25% or better margin. Now we have to mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna put that for now. I'd have to do a lot of research to determine like when the margin keeps going up, then there's the possibility that the customers are not going to pay for it so i have to do some modeling for that uh, but given that this is just a simple youtube video i'm not going to go to uh, pricing modeling that's uh, you can search for other videos on that and the other one we want to look at is when we maximize margins we want to understand that um consuming no more than 80% of reserves. So I'm just, I'm just kind of making something up, spitballing this. I definitely would have be talking to an actuarial team 
to make sure I am on track with saying this stuff, or they might come and slap my hand saying, no way we do stuff like that. So it's great. It's This is for brainstorming. It's for asking those questions. Say, what might be good measurable objectives? My recommendation here when you do this, just blast out a whole bunch of measurable objectives on the board. You can always say no or change them later. So brainstorming techniques, try to get the most amount of optionality out there. And once that has occurred, then look at ways to refine or cull some of these ideas. Okay, let's go to... Mm -hmm. let's, let's do some examples. So I'm gonna blast down a feature here. <laughs> let's, let's put a couple of bits in. All right. So the way that this piece works is assume that I have an epic and I've broken that down. So the taxonomy I'm using here is perhaps I have something large called an epic. That epic breaks down into features and those features can break down into user stories or smaller product backlog items then to which the team will task those. So where I want to sit in that hierarchy is at a feature level and an amalgamation of features into an epic can show the epic performance i might do a video on showing you s curve performance based on value which this exercise here can definitely plug into so if we were to uh, build a new feature um, for perhaps And then, of course, all my spelling is way off. Actuarial uh, model visualization. If I don't spell things right, well, that's why I have systems to help me with. We got a model visualization. Um, <clears throat> another thing that we might want is taking a look at our currencies. Uh, perhaps a... Comparative sales tool. Now, if you think about that, the idea that we want here is a tool that will allow us to, maybe you're buying a whole bunch of items, uh, perhaps, okay, let's say, uh, package dealer. Okay, so what do we mean by a package dealer? Just say there's an idea that, well, I have, a luxury brand store, customer comes in, they buy a bunch of different accessories. And if they put the different accessories together, then we'll productize the insurance against those accessories, but in a way that when it sees the products that I'm putting together, that can bundle it into a package and maybe give me a deal that is better than if I were to buy single um, warranties against each item so they can put it together in a package okay so as we craft out those features then you have everybody from your team give us an indication of well where just say we got three team members so i'll make a, a couple of colors here change that one so what we're doing is so we know which Team members are voting on what? So we can see. Okay. All right. So let's take a call. Okay. Close up. All right. So we're going to do this in a planning poker type style. So, so what I mean by planning poker is doing bids on okay well where should i put my sticky note <laughs> when i look at hmm, actuarial model visualization currency one just to make it easier for us let's do a copy of that one we bring it over let's drop this on top of currency one let's grab the other one currency two take that one bring it over and plop right there on currency two 
So the team will evaluate, say, actual actuarial model visualization. How good would that be for responsiveness to customer requests? So if someone here said, well, you can do this blind and then transfer it later. And then they might do something like that. It's like, OK. And then for later, we can just take an average of those. <laughs> and margin maximizing, perhaps that's going to help a little bit more. So I say, well, that seems to be a five for me. This person is going to say it's a four. And this one might say it's a four as well. Again, they're just using kind of a gut instinct. The other thing you can do is just define, well, what does a one represent? What are examples where we have a one and what are examples where we have a 10? And it's kind of relative the way that we're doing this. Now, we could plug in a whole bunch of financial calculus into this. And if you're at that level where you can potentially bring some of those methods to bear, especially in the age where AI is becoming easier and easier to use, then you can have you know, other tools to help you with the evaluatory aspects of these. Okay. And then just say we run it for the package dealer again. So the currencies are responsiveness to customer requests. Does a package dealer help us with that? And this team might say, well, I think that's a three. This person might say, okay, I agree with you. This person might say, oh, I think that's a two. You might think that the actuarial model visualization is more responsiveness to customer requests, possibly because when the customer requests something, we need those actuarial models. And look at me not copying the thing. So let's go back and copy this one. Oh, some of the things just to remind yourself when you're working. Make sure you get a good copy paste going. There you go. Okay, package dealer. But the package dealer might be a lot better at maximizing margins. So that person says it's a seven. Copy paste. That person might say it's a seven. They'll do that. Uh, this person might think, hey, I really like that. That's a great idea. And Copy it first. Getting a little ahead of myself. All right. There we go. Time premium. We'll keep this one simple. We'll put a time premium of a one on that. Just say your product owner, whoever is evaluating your time premiums, they're going to say, yeah, there's no urgency on those. Now, if there was a big dealer conference coming up, perhaps we can say package dealer. We might want to bump that up to specify a range on this. I use 0 0.1 to 2 as my bounds, uh, just so you it's part of just define the bounds so we don't do something like we'll put 1,000 there. It's like, okay, if you want this at the top of the backlog, just say, put it to the top of the backlog if you're the prime decision maker of that um, item, okay? And then the effort is the, the team's estimation of effort. Um, <clears throat> since it's a feature and it might break down into smaller chunks, here's what we can do. Uh, effort can come in very, various different things. Just say they say this. This one's a large because the actuarial stuff that sits underneath it. It'd be uh, quite cumbersome to get all the formulas in there. They're saying, you know, relative to the model visualization, the package dealer might be something that's a little more on the medium size. So this is, again, a relative estimation. This one is using T-shirt sizes and the package dealer uh <clears throat> might be a, a little bit easier for them to do is, is what they're saying um, they could be wrong could be wrong but for the sake of this 
exercise. I'm not going to debate too far on that. We're just going to put those down. Now, when we're using this, well, this is, doesn't equate to a monetary item. So what I'll do is let's copy one of these, show you an example that I use. It might take another video to describe this further. Uh, but if I have a small, let's take a copy of that. That one is small. Take a copy of that. This one is a medium. And we might have a large. Okay. And some teams like to do this. They like to throw extra smalls at me. Extra small. So an extra small. If we're doing it in terms of story points, so if you've done story estimation points before, uh, a lot of videos on it uh, throughout the internet, I can definitely do one on this. When they say it's an extra small, doable within, assuming that you're using two week sprints, doable within two weeks. If it's bigger than that, then what we can do is baseline a small at, well, this will have 20 estimation points We'll double this 20 to 40 estimation points, and then I'll double the 40. Uh, let's make it 80 estimation points like that. Okay. So we know if we have a large, I'm going to convert the large to 80 points of effort, and then the medium, I'll put the 40 down. So then all we need to do is just say I take the four. So we got a five and a four. So we can, one way of doing this is I'll, I'll just take that, uh, the one that comes up the most, the fives and fours. So I don't have to do math, math in front of you and say, well, okay, well, that's a nine divided by 80. So if we go, I have to do a little bit of boring calculator stuff. I'll do over on the side. So 9 divided by 80 equals 0.112. So the numbers are going to turn into decimals if I do this. Here's another way of doing this is I'm going to multiply any of these currency scores by 100. So once I come up with the overall score, uh, so 5 and 9, I'll call that 900 divided by 80. Let me just double check. Uh, let's clear that out. 900 divided by 80. Okay, good. I could just move the decimal, but I don't trust my brain as I get older. So this will come out to a WSGIF of 11.25. Again, if that looks odd to you it's because i'm just going to put a factor of 100 after these numbers so i don't have to get all kinds of weird decimal numbers uh, on these i like to have some sort of whole number to look at makes it easy okay pro tip here makes it easier to talk to sponsors and executives when you're not dealing with <laughs> decimal numbers uh, how about over here let's take a, a 300 and 700 that's a thousand I'd use again using that conversion and we'll pop that by a 40 and that comes to 25. I'll take this one and place 25. Okay. So now what's this what this is telling us is we should do the 25 first. 25 is bigger than the 11.25. So then this package dealer will percolate to the top of the backlog. And just in conclusion here, you can keep going through this for every feature that you have. Come up with that prioritization element. Okay. And then the other thing that you consider is, well, how are we going to measure as we deliver on the bits of the package dealer, 
how are we going to check the measurable objectives against that as we deliver over time? Okay, so as you break these things out into their constituent elements, you start delivering on those elements, and then once package dealer is done, find a way to evaluate that using data to say, have we reached the objectives that we set us out for? But overall, this gives us the ability to this prioritization mechanism gives us that ability to rank or stack rank these backlog items. What I'll do is I'll place this template onto Patreon. So those of you who use Miro, I have a place for Patreon subscribers to pick those up. So if you don't want to spend the time to design all of this, then I'll package that up for you. But here we go prioritization. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Leave some comments below if you want me to tweak or change anything, or if you have suggestions to making this better. Thanks for your attention and have a good one.